NIH has 27 institutes and centers and other sorts of trans NIH research initiatives and they're all collecting data and sometimes they're collecting data on the same topics. But if they're collecting it in slightly different ways, then that data can't be compared or combined. All the data that gets captured in various studies, it's not just for those one-off publications that come out for a team to put on their CVs and advance them in their own academic careers. It's really to be able to have reinvestable assets as data artifacts that can lead to new discoveries. Common data elements are a standardized question with a specific set of uh, allowable responses or a format like a date or a number. And when that question and answer pair is used consistently over multiple studies across different sites, the data collected with those studies is interoperable and can be combined and compared because it's collected in this consistent and standardized way. The NIH CDE repository was launched by the National Library of Medicine in 2015. The purpose is to support making NIH research data interoperable, which allows for greater statistical analysis and combining and comparing data sets and so on. So interoperability is important because it um, fosters collaboration, comparison of uh, data, especially in those large data sets that we have. For NIH, there, there will be many benefits you know, that interoperability. And I think one of the most important ones will be to identify gaps in their own studies. Even when I was just getting out of grad school, working with data coordinating centers, we tended to template out how we would collect data according to the subject matter expertise of those domain experts, the basic scientists, the clinicians, on how they gathered the data. That group kind of evolved into a set of stewards that went into the National Library of Medicine hosted Common Data Element Repository. So I did both, like working from scratch in projects, you know, going through all the meetings, the back and forth, etc. And then I did it with the CDEs. I did a study in stroke when I was in academia. And the difference was dramatic. You know, the, the time that I saved was incredible. So in 2020, with the NIH Scientific Data Council, along with representation from different NIH ICs, convened the NIH CDE Governance Committee for the first time and the NIH CDE Repository Team. And together, what we hope to do is promote the use of CDEs across NIH. You know, many clinicians were not involved in data collection or they led that to the data science team. Uh, they started to get more and more involved in the actual uh, process and learning about the concepts. So many new groups have started either adopting already developed CDEs or developing their own because they saw a gap. This new 2023 data management sharing policy certainly emphasizes how in their data management and data sharing plans, investigative teams ought to take advantage of interoperability standards like common data elements. And wherever they can, fully anchor in to the sort of things that the National Library of Medicine has and is well annotated in the Common Data Element Repository. Controlled vocabularies, terminologies, standards that even translate to clinical practice. We're breaking down silos at NIH and bringing all these different groups together. They come in, they may come from different institutes and sometimes from external uh, organizations like academia, industry, etc and now they're developing, and this is more in the preclinical world, but also in the clinical um, CDs. It's key to what goes with our tagline at NIH, from discovery to health. You're gonna limit what you can discover unless you can integrate data from multiple sources and have it retain the meaning and underlying constructs across those. I think a, another part of my personal vision for the CDE repository is that we're currently focused on and accepting CDEs only from NIH recognized bodies, but maybe we can extend that outward into the real world and align with standards used in the electronic health records and bring in that real world data for even more powerful analysis and discovery.